So I've made it to Wichita, Kansas, and I'm in this amazing motorcycle museum, Twisted Oz, and this is Jerry. This is, most of this is Jerry's. This is Jerry's collection. Very, very interesting guy, and he's going to show me around and give the history and some amazing stories about some of these incredibly rare and antique old bikes. So just to give you a bit more information about this place, it was originally dreamed up by a man named Kelly Modlin, who started with an old body shop building, and with the help of lots of friends and family, this eclectic museum was created and opened to the public in 2016. And it's filled with some truly amazing and rare motorcycles. Now, there's no way I could show all of the bikes in here, or all of the other vintage decor throughout this place. Every square inch has something special to see here. I mean, this video would be hours long, but that's why you really need to come here and check this place out for yourself. And even if you aren't the biggest fan of vintage bikes, you will still appreciate some of the incredible stories and information that Jerry talks about in this video. He's been collecting since the early 1950s and like I said, many of these bikes are from Jerry's personal collection. The love and pride that all these guys have for this museum and these motorcycles is very obvious and welcoming. So sit back and enjoy all the sights and the sounds. <laughs> They had uh, wow. 90 of them started with a 100-year-old bike and 60 finished. This bike's 106 years old and it went on the cannonball in what, 14 was it? Yeah, 16. 16. And it ran from uh, Atlantic City to uh, San, right near San Diego, Carlsbad, California. 3,600 miles. 1914. First day out, he lost front and rear brakes. So he had a new set of boots, and here he boot out. <laughs> 3,300 miles with no brakes. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, then the gas tank came apart on him, and uh, so that he bought this at Tractor Supply somewhere. Oh, wow. Goes to the carburetor, so I don't use the gas tank anymore. This held more gas, too. That's incredible. The muffler blew apart. It's a cast aluminum muffler. And some farmer come along some Sunday morning and asked him if uh, he could help him. And he said he had a welding outfit and everything. So they took it to the farmer place. And the farmer said, well, my kid's got a trampoline in the backyard. He said, they don't use it anymore, so we'll go cut the trampoline out of it. And it just fit. The tubes going up into these cylinders here, see? So this is from a trampoline. Yeah. That's and awesome. They straightened up all the pipes and, you know, made it so they fit this. And, wow. But uh, anyway, it went uh, faster. Went from 45 to 55 mile an hour. Cruising. That's a huge difference, jeez. Yeah. Yeah, you could tell this one is definitely, I mean, it's got the GPS and the, the flashlights. Yeah, and this thing here, see, they can take and roll it. Got knobs over here. And they give them that every morning. They don't know where they're going. Oh. And, uh, so then they, see, this is towards the end of the ride, Carl's Bad Village and all this. And it was right near San Diego. Interesting. Yeah, Atlantic City to Carl's Bad. On the bottom of the crankcase, it's stamped experimental. And this is. And the curator of the Harley Museum was here one time on the Cannonball. They stopped here once. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I was giving him a tour of the whole place. And he knew all about this thing. And, but it's their first overhead valve motorcycle. They had two of them. And they said one of them, one of the Harley Davidson, one of the kid, grandkids from one of the families, one of the two families, took it and rode it all summer. And they don't know where it went. Oh man, it disappeared. And, and it said Jeez. in this article I was reading out of a magazine, it said Jerry Ottaway in Wichita has the only one in existence. 
Now somebody, the guy I bought it from probably, he put the fenders on it and the headlight and stuff. He didn't know it was a, anything special either. When you were reading that article, did you know that it had been stamped ex experimental? Or you learned about it when you read it in the article about your bike? Yeah. And then so you well, went out and looked at it and sure enough... Yeah, well, I never had any occasion to look underneath wow. it. Wow. <laughs> you know, so that's kind of a neat story. I'm yeah. Off, so. so these are all yours? Uh, 70 of them are. Most of them in this building are. Some you you found just like this and they're survivors? Yep. Found this at Alton, Kansas one time, uh, back in the 50s. I didn't give hardly anything for this stuff. Yeah. I think this was a $50 one. <laughs> and uh, Reading Standard, 1908, first motorcycle at Pine Pikes Peak, Colorado. And normally guys that have this old stuff, if they get them to go around the block while they're doing good, you know, I mean, they, so we decided to climb Pikes Peak. We went up there 10, uh, every 10 years we'd go up, started in 1960. And uh, That was when it was all dirt roads, right? Yeah. Wow. And it went all the way up. This is beautiful. So this, th you, f you found this just like it is? Yep. You get $50 for it. Look at that, man. Put tires on it. We've ridden that thing like 140 miles in a day uh, with antique car tours. Back then they didn't have motorcycle tours. I was collecting this stuff when nobody, everybody thought I was crazy. Is this, uh, what? what is this? Is this the... That's uh, propane under pressure. Rubber hose that runs from here to the tank. Well, here's where it comes off the tank here. Yeah. And uh, you light the fire in these and see. Oh, so all this just for the headlight? The headlight and tail light. When did they go to actual light bulbs? Uh, about 16, 17. You could get them with electric or gas either way for a while. I mean, this stuff, I mean, probably what's still amazing is this, this stuff is still sitting in barns and garages all across the country, yeah, right? Yeah, we we hear about stuff once in a while, but uh, it's getting harder and harder to find those uh, amazing if they've got barn the original finds. paint like these three, uh, they're worth more money if you just put tires on them, get them, don't so, paint them. Yeah, just this is how I would keep it too. This is amazing looking. Yeah, yeah. The flying Merkel. Yeah, we've never even cleaned these up really with that one and this one here. Wow. So what is, like a bike like this, what, what is it worth these days if this were to go to like an auction or something? Probably 50000 Wow. These aren't the expensive ones here. But even still, how great would this look in your living room or something, just sitting there, you know well, what I mean? Guys have been there living yeah. Room. That's what I would do. Man, that is gorgeous. Now this is a Harley Davidson. So when did Harley Davidson? When did they start making bikes? Uh, 1904. Indians started in one, so Indian were way ahead of them. Mm -hmm. In five, when they built 1100, these Harley built 50. Ah, uh, so they were really small back then, right? Yeah. This is the best original bike we got. The original paint. Yeah. Uh, so. What would this go for? You think? Mm -hmm. Oh, 75. Jeez. This got the original tools in the toolbox, which is probably more rare than a motorcycle is. I'll show you that. Okay, it says Indian motorcycles. Wow. All the tools say Indian on them. That was factory. When you bought them, you got the tools. Of course. Not hardly any of them have got the speedometers. Now, this one does. And the reason that it cost three dollars and fifty cents more for the speedometer when they bought the bike, and it was that much extra, and uh, most of them didn't want the speedometer. Oh. Three dollars. You uh, see, this is a rocker arm type thing. Yeah. And this leaf spring gives it some action, so they had to have a clearance in here. Uh, I've never seen that before. They call that little piece out in front a duck bill. <laughs> a duck bill. I like that. <laughs> the handlebars are almost like a very early design, like a cafe racer, right? 
kind of like real well, these low. Were, these were Indians racing bars. He made them just like mm -hmm. Indians. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, didn't have any uh, transmission, no clutch, no brakes. So the the fact that it has no, it has one gear. So you really have to kind of get it going, right? Yeah, they got to push it. Strong. Yeah. 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 I mean, they get wound up out there and go. Is that him? That's the yeah. bike. Wow, that is awesome. Both these machines run on uh, ethanol and alcohol. Those loops are uh, for vibration. If you run a line straight from here to here, you don't have any, your lines will crack. Okay. Break. So you put the loop in them and that loop absorbs the vibration, they won't crack with you with the loop in them. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine lived in Kansas City, and he, he collected old motorcycles, but he'd sell them all the time. He'd drive through an urban renewal area in the early 60s, and they had all these row houses. This was laying up against the building, and these two old guys were there. He asked them what they were going to do with their motorcycle, and they said, well, they wanted to sell it. They wanted $100 for it. So, he bought it and then he put tires on it, got it running, and then he called me. <laughs> he wanted sixteen hundred. Uh, anyway, I went up and bought it. That's great. It's eighty five thousand dollars motorcycle. Wow. I'd say that's a pretty good investment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whenever I talk to him I have to harass him a little bit. <laughs> you make sure you remind him about that. Yeah. Well I'll tell you about this color. During World War One, Harley, Indian, and Henderson furnished the motorcycles. Mm -hmm. They were all painted the army color. After the war, the guys get home, and then they'd see a Harley that same color. So they'd buy one. And Harley painted them the same color till 1930. Wow. I mean, it was a marketing deal. And all these guys, they couldn't remember what brand they had, but that was the one because it was green. <laughs> That's a good idea. You ever hear of Pierce Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Pierce Arrow built these. It's the first four cylinder built in the United States, and it's the first shaft drive. In five years, they only they built less than 500 of them. Wow. So it's extremely rare. Like, uh, so this part is the oil tank. Yeah. And this is the gas tank. Yeah. And this down tube is the gas tank. Very interesting. Same way on this one here. So clever, I mean, just coming up with these designs back then. I would imagine it was easy to, especially on this bike, to burn your side of your legs, right? Oh, yeah. You, know, you, you got your leg here. Well, there's your spark plug, and you will get your leg into the spark plug once in a while, and that'll wake you up. Amazing. No cover. They had, it was just like that. Yeah. Wow. This is a 1914 wood. I've never heard of a wood. Wood only produced one yeah, motorcycle, that's why. Huh? I said I've never heard of that, but they only produced one motorcycle. That's right. It was a bicycle shop owner in Denver built it. Everybody was wanting to get in on the motorcycle craze. In order to attract big money, they had to win a race or do a big ride. And his, the guy and his wife rode that from Denver to St. Augustine, Florida. And there was no pavement at all. Uh, they went across cow pastures, and uh, if they if they could go 60 miles a day if they didn't have a breakdown, but they broke down almost every day. <laughs> so they, he just gave up after that? He didn't want to produce any more? Well, he couldn't get any money uh. from anybody. In. It's a two-cycle, two-stroke mm -hmm. twin, which is pretty unusual that early. Stroke yeah. A friend of mine had a business in Denver and he was going down the street one day and he seen this laying up against a tree and he's having a garage sale. And uh, No way. He stopped and the guy wanted $50 for it. And so he called us and called my granddad and he said, Do you want that for 50 And he said, yeah, I'll buy it. So then he even hold it to Wichita for us. <laughs> wow. It started out as a Henderson 4 motorcycle. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you put the 
box on the back. And those rear fenders are from a 60 model uh, MG. That's pretty handy. Jeez. Yeah. When you get ready, you're going to want to go the other side too and catch the exhaust. Okay. Sounds incredible. Very first in the six ever built. Two thousand CCs. <laughs> you ever rode it? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we ride it a lot now, but I kind of hard for me to push it around. Yeah. yeah. Just open her up and see what she do. Now his son has had over hundred miles an hour. Yeah. All gave us a demonstration on that. <laughs> He had to make a camshaft and exhaust header. Uh, front forks, uh, we put Indian forks on it, Indian wheels and fenders. Well, last thing we did put the motor in, and the Indian forks wouldn't hold it up. So the Harley dealer says, well, we'll put Harley forks on there, and uh, I think those are fan head forks. And uh, he said, that'll hold them. Well, it didn't. Wow. They went down. So. In order to pull a sidecar, they put stiffer springs on the forks. So we put sidecar side springs, car springs. And it up. So then we went Harley fenders and wheels. Wow. Uh, mixture. When did he do all this? He finished it in August of 60. Okay. He worked about three years on it, so late 50s. So that concludes the tour. To this amazing motorcycle museum and I want to say thanks to Jerry, Paul, Kelly and Brendan for showing me this amazing place that happened to be actually Brendan's birthday so we had some hot dogs and celebrated that and uh, had a good time looking at all the bikes so thanks all you guys thanks for all your amazing stories hope you love this video and when you are in Kansas in this area you definitely need to check out Twisted Oz this place is amazing the best motorcycle museum I've ever been to come in say hi tell them I said to tell you to say hi and uh, make sure you pick up a shirt like I did thanks for watching see you in the next video <laughs>